audiences across the country with his feats of daring and science. And today, he brought his freak show to Good Day Chicago. Tom Britton, here's some video of him at work. He's with Freak Show and Tell, and he is here to show us how he does exactly that. First of all, Tom, I gotta ask you, why eat fire? Why, at what point in your life did you say, you know what, that sounds like fun and a good idea. I'm gonna eat fire. I think you can draw a straight line from juggling to fire eating, <laughs> particularly if you're a 10 year old boy when you do it. Uh, okay. I show my friends, hey, look, I'm gonna do three balls. First thing they say, well, I saw this guy that did knives. Now I gotta do knives. <laughs> hey, look, everybody, I can do machetes. Well, I saw this dude on Johnny Carson. That's how old I am. He was doing <laughs> fire. Here we go. Right. I saw a guy what did chainsaws. I saw a guy eat fire. So by the time I was 16 years old, I was in a circus sideshow performing because yeah. I loved it very, very, very much. And mostly juggling and then doing sort of the MC work. Okay. Uh, natural at that. And this was a natural progression. Path. It just seems weird because it is. I started as a juggler, which is already strange. Uh, yeah, let's get right to the fire eating. Yes. So first of all, show me. You're, I love that you told me this during the break. Unlike a magician, this isn't magic. This is science. So you yes. can tell us exactly how it's done. So how do you do this? And that's the beauty of science. Science without explanation yeah. is mysticism. The I have a lot of hairspray happening in my hair. You'll hair, be fine. So I'm just gonna, I, I've yeah. installed an early warning detection system on my face called a beard. Oh, Should anything good. go Perfect. wrong, I'll be the first to know. <laughs> so fire eating works through two principles. Kay. The first is called thermal lag. This is thermal lag. Now you've done Can this do before. That? Yeah, absolutely. Go. Just move quickly. So if you stopped, you burn. If you apply it to fire eating, if you learn exactly how long you can wait, you can extinguish the fire. So that is exactly what I'm going to do with my mouth. It's the exact same physics. That moment doesn't change. All I've learned in 25 years of practice is how long I can milk it before it goes my before burn. That's why it wow. seemed to take so long, is okay. I know the exact tolerance on that. And I do in my face as well. Now, is the tolerance different, let's say, between you and I? No. Uh, okay. You would be a little scared at first. Well, All terrified. animals on this planet yeah. run from fire. We run towards it. Humans are unique that way. Uh, and so your adrenaline will make you a little more sensitive. But you just keep practicing for months and months and months. And like I said, over, over a quarter of a century later, you can then move on to step two. So you know how long it's going to take for your mouth to put out this flame. And I can feel it. And what I'm going to do is a combination of lower the oxygen so you'll see the flame get smaller. Okay. I'm also going to use an embouchure to shape a bubble of fumes around the fire that protects my mouth. Oh my goodness. Okay, now when you jumped at first, was that did that burn I you? I looked at that light. <laughs> which I don't have on my set on yeah, the stage. Right. And it, it, that was what made me jump, was I looked directly into one of your studio lights. Oh, okay. So that wasn't I, the fire. That's like, just me not being on that... TV all the time. Sorry. Okay. So now let's talk about what just happened there, mm -hmm. though. What is the bubble that you just or, tried to explain so that So let's you were pretend forming? that's my mouth and that's the torch, right? Yeah. When I put the torch in, I'm holding it for a couple of seconds. That isn't just milking it for showmanship, though I'm not above that. Uh, I'm letting <laughs> a pocket of fumes build up between the torch and my mouth. Okay. And it's like a buffer. But just like the thermal lag, only for a couple of seconds because that pocket will get hot and cook me by confection, right. right? So I have to hold it, but it lets me play with it. Did you ever do the thing where you put the lighter in your hand and light the fumes in your hand? I'm going to do that with these fumes in my mouth now. Okay. So I'm going to take, pretend that's the torch. I'm going to take it lit, put it in my mouth, pull it out, still lit, leaving some hot fumes behind. As I pull it out, I'm going to shift my embouchure, which is just how you hold it. It's a French fry. You hold it. If you played instruments in high school, you know that term. As I shift my mouth, those fumes will light. Now I can pull the torch away, my mouth will be lit. I'll demonstrate this by lighting a dead torch off of, dead meaning unlit, dead torch off of my face. And then I'll okay. attempt what's called the human candelabra. I'll attempt to keep this lit, this lit, and my face lit okay. for a second. Th and I'm just gonna attempt to stay far away from you. And this, so. is, this is a little more advanced move. So you may wanna practice Slightly. this before yeah. you show your friends. You don't say, yeah. Okay. Also, if there are children watching, I am an insane person. Please don't do this. This is a terrible idea. Okay. So one, two, three. Step one, two. Three. That is unbelievable. Oh my goodness. Okay. <laughs> well, you've left all of us in awe here. I I'm not even going to say that I want to attempt this because I know how this would end for me and it 
looks like the picture, you know, in the fold out on an airplane where my hair is on fire. So <laughs> That's awesome. we're just going to toss it back to Natalie and John. Thank you so much. Thank this you is so much unbelievable. for having me. I'm I, glad. So next, we're going to have you on again soon. Anytime. I want the next trick. <laughs> this is amazing, guys. Yeah, Tom, that was awesome. A couple quick questions. Uh, first off, uh, have you ever had any uh, incidents or accidents you can tell us about, including yeah. maybe uh, your, your finely uh, coiffed facial hair <laughs> catching fire? No, but this is because in my art form, it's very, very, very old. So the man I learned fire eating for, for, from, for example, was named Pete Tehern or Little Pooba. Little Pooba, born a dwarf, and if you suffer from dwarfism or giantism, you're gonna have medical expenses. At right. nine years old, he was in the circus. At 10 years old, he ate fire. At 50 years old, with four decades of experience, he taught a 16-year-old Tom Britton. Mm. So whereas I might have been very young and dumb and foolish, I had a man 50 years old with 40 years experience going like, no, slow down. Hey, so the same way if you're learning karate to break a board, right, right. you don't learn from a 20-something-year-old guy teaching a 16-year-old guy. That way lies madness. Yeah. Makes wow. it even more awesome. Nary a blister. All right, mm. Tom.